currently has one of the lowest tobacco taxes in the country. Mr. Chair, move the bill. Second. 35th. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. With Thank you. With an 87 percent tax per pack compared to the national average, almost twice that, $1.60. These rates have uh, in California have not been raised in over 15 years. And we know that tobacco taxes work. For every 10 percent increase in the price of a pack of cigarettes, there's a 4 percent reduction in overall cigarette consumption and a 6.5 percent reduction in youth consumption. And this is one of the reasons why this bill is so important, young people. The Surgeon General projects that without a major reversal in trends, 5.6 million youth aged 0 to 17 living today will die prematurely from tobacco use. Those are completely preventable deaths. And today it is estimated that 16 percent of high school students, 16 percent, are addicted to cigarettes. This is in spite of uh, all the work we've done and the successes that we've had. I think it's an important point that we're not there yet. Um, but 16 percent of high school students are addicted to cigarettes and one in four use some form of tobacco. Though there's widespread education on the dangers of tobacco, availability and deceptive marketing continues to lure our youth to try these dangerous products. So this bill is an important step to fight tobacco addiction and tobacco-related illness and will allow California counties to join over 600 local jurisdictions nationwide that have their own cigarette taxes uh, or fees. These jurisdictions bring in more than $430 million in annual revenue and working effectively and are working for effectively to reduce smoking rates, again, especially amongst young people, and to decrease smoking caused death, disease, and costs. Increasing the cost of cigarettes is one of the most powerful and direct ways to reduce smoking. Studies have shown that youth and low income adults are especially likely to quit or reduce smoking, smoking I'm sorry, when prices increase. No one is better equipped to know how to fight tobacco addiction on the local level than the voters themselves, and this bill allows the Board of Supervisors of a county to propose these kinds of measures to their constituents. The bill is a sensible measure to help counties deter tobacco use locally, and I urge your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Witnesses in support. Good afternoon, Chair and Members. Lindsay Freitas with the American Lung Association in California. Uh, this bill, as was mentioned, would remove the current prohibition against counties passing local taxes and help prevent kids from smoking, improve public health, and help generate local revenue. Nearly 40,000 Californians die from tobacco-related illness each year, and smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States, killing more people than alcohol, AIDS, car accidents, illegal drugs, murder, and suicide combined. Um, as the assembly member mentioned, tobacco taxes, whether at the state, federal, or local level, have been a proven and effective way to uh, reduce tobacco use among youth in particular, a 10 percent increase leading to a 6.5 percent reduction in youth uh, consumption. In California, we currently have 21,000 youth who start smoking every year, and over 40, 440,000 kids under the age of 18 today that will ultimately die from tobacco-related disease. And by allowing counties to tax tobacco, we can help make sure they can take that step to ensure that these kids never start smoking and lower that number. Not only will this bill allow counties the opportunity to save lives, but also money. This bill will give counties a chance to pass a tax that will ultimately help save millions of dollars. Overall, tobacco-related disease costs Medi-Cal $3.5 billion a year. It inflicts $13.29 billion in total medical expenses in our state e each year and $10.35 billion in lost productivity. These numbers are a huge burden to our state. On average, California families' tax burden from smoking-caused government expenditure is $745 per household. On a county-to-county -county basis, the cost of smoking varies from $374 per resident in Orange County to over $1,000 per resident in Lake County. And the total costs vary from around $300,000 in Alpine County, a total cost, to $4.4 billion in Los Angeles County alone. Of all these associated costs, all of these associated costs will decrease as the number of people decrease smoking. And this bill really gives counties the, the empowerment to help make that happen. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Tim Gibbs, American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, and we're <coughs> in support of this legislation because <coughs> we think that local communities should be given a choice when it comes to going beyond state law to protect their citizens from the deadly effects of tobacco use, allowing counties the ability to give voters a choice on whether a higher tobacco tax uh, makes sense for their community is the essence of local control. One of the most pernicious tactics that the tobacco companies use in order to stymie legislation and ensure that no policies pass that result in fewer people smoking is to preempt local governments from passing tobacco control legislation. Their modus operandi is to pass a weak law at the state level where they wield more power and then prevent locals from improving on the weak policy. For the most part, California has a long history of resisting the tobacco companies' attempt to preempt local efforts to reduce smoking. The reason we're able to pass the nation's first smoke-free workplace law was because local efforts made that happen. Local communities have the ability to decide for themselves on whether or not they want to protect workers from the harmful effects of secondhand smoke. Across this state, communities acted, which eventually led to the state enacting minimum standards for smoke-free workplaces. Many communities have chosen to go beyond the minimum standards that the state has set. We've also resisted preemption <coughs> excuse me, in local licensing ordinances that give law enforcement the ability to enforce youth access laws. Unfortunately, the one area where the tobacco companies have been successful in preventing local communities from protecting their citizens has been in taxes. Nearly 50 years ago, California decided not to allow counties to levy tobacco taxes. With more than 600 jurisdictions across the country that can levy their own taxes, we want to give our 58 counties uh, the ability to decide for themselves. This isn't a vote about raising taxes. This is a vote about establishing local control and stopping the tobacco companies from preempting counties from reducing smoking. We hope that you agree <laughs> that counties deserve to decide for themselves, and we respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Additional witnesses in support. David Ford for the Association of Northern California Oncologists and the Medical Oncology Association of Southern California in support. Vanessa Kahina on behalf of the California Society of Anesthesiologists here in support. Lydia Bourne representing American Academy of Pediatrics in support. Jerry Jaffe representing the California Chronic Care Coalition in support. Jasmine Gordon on behalf of the California Black Health Network in support. Kimberly Chen with the California Pan-Ethnic Health Network in support. Justin Garrett with March of Dimes in support. Kula Koenig with the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, proud co-sponsors of this bill. So White Seum on behalf of Health Access California in support. Christina Romero, Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California in support. Brianna Pittman, California Dental Association in strong support. Alicia Sanchez representing the California Medical Association in support. Tim Madden representing the California Chapter of American College of Cardiology in support. Uh, Chair and Member Sean South on behalf of the California Primary Care Association in support. Terry Brennan on behalf of SEIU California in support. Brennan Roberts with the Health Officers Association of California in support. Dr. Donald Lyman, California Academy of Preventive Medicine in support. Matt Reed on behalf of Breathe California and the Breathe California Affiliates in support. Thank you. See no additional witnesses in support, witnesses in opposition. Please come forward. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members, Dennis Sloper representing the California Distributors Association. Uh, we are the taxpayers. It's not the, it's not the tobacco manufacturers. It's not the retailers. It's not the consumers. The tax is applied to distributors, many of which are family businesses here in California and would have trouble maintaining taxes in some over 50 counties if that were to happen. Uh, also, it, was, it should be noted that there was local taxes up until 1967, and in 1967, the legislature and the League of Cities removed that because of the chaos it caused in the marketplace and that there was casual bootlegging in that you could be across the street in one jurisdiction and have a tax and not on, on another, and it, beca it became a problem, so which they moved it back to a state-only tax, which makes sense. Uh, you know, in essence, it's a tax on the distributors, and that's a very small community of family, mostly family-owned businesses, and for those reasons, we oppose. Thank you, Mr. Loper. My name is Gregory Conley, again on behalf of the American Vaping Association. While this bill does not impact vapor products at the moment, would not give local counties the authority uh, to tax them, I would still urge opposition. Um, the speaker from the American Lung Association earlier, I applaud her for accurately noting that it is smoking that kills. It is smoking that results 
and 400,000 deaths plus per year. It is smoking that results in the cost to Medicare and Medicaid throughout this state. It is not smoke-free tobacco and nicotine products, some of which would be included in this bill, such as Swedish snus, which we have decades of evidence from Sweden on its effectiveness for helping smokers quit. While we don't advocate for that individual product, I advocate for any smoker to switch to any nic not nicotine, smoke-free product because they are all far less hazardous, whether it is the gum patch lozenge or if it is snus. Smokers deserve options, and they don't deserve to be taxed possibly even more than they are on a pack of cigarettes for trying to get away from smoking. Thank you. Thank you. Additional witnesses in opposition. Mr. Chair, members, James Jack on behalf of the C Cigar Association of America in opposition. Peter Blocker at the California Taxpayers Association in opposition. Thank you. Seeing no additional witnesses in opposition, we can go to questions and comments from members. Seeing Assemblymember Baker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Bloom, for bringing this forward. I, I struggle with this one a bit, and I, I find one of I, I find the points that have been raised by the opposition compelling, and in particular the the market chaos that was caused, and also just making this become something that is almost an underground product because you can use it more across borders depending on what the taxation policy is there when our goal is, I, I think a, a legitimate goal, is to reduce uh, reliance on this product. So you know, can you just address some of the points of opposition? You may be doing that in your closing anyway, but I would uh, value that. Thank you. I, I'm happy to, and I'll uh, allow the uh, uh, advocates to respond as well if that's all right. Um, I, I just don't see this as a significant problem. There may be different taxes in different jurisdictions, but wherever one goes to shop, one's going to pay the uh, um, the tax that's levied in that location. And if there's some people going to a different county to purchase, that doesn't change the overall impact of what we're trying to accomplish here. Yeah, and um, more than 60% of smokers buy one pack at a time. I mean. The vast majority of smokers want to quit smoking, buying a carton, driving to Nevada, driving, you know, you know, wherever, the next county over where you're from. It could be a long, long way from Alameda County to Contra Costa County, um, depending on the traffic. So, you know, most smokers don't want to make that commitment to buy multiple packs of cigarettes. They're going to stop at their local store and pay, the, you know, the, uh, the, the tax that's in their local community. And Assembly Member, I challenge the notion that uh, in 1967 the law was changed because of chaos. In 1967, the law was changed to provide a statewide, uh, only statewide authorization in order to benefit the tobacco companies for the very reasons that we heard earlier. It is easier for tobacco uh, companies to uh, restrict the amount of taxation at the state level than it is at the local level. Well, thank you. And I, I am imagining what I think is very possible, which is now perhaps someone buys one pack at a time. But if they all they have to do is go from, say, Contra Costa County, San Ramon, into Pleasanton or Livermore and buy a lot more at once um, in order to avoid the tax, that is a concern I have. It's also somewhat more regressive as well. If someone can just manage to pay the tax, where the additional funds, wherever it is, they can do that unless they would rather go somewhere else and get them more in bulk. That, that's a possibility I'm thinking of. And I, and I have a, a constituency that uh, many of my local towns are very aggressive against smoking. And I, I find it is perfectly possible for them to say, you're not going to do it in apartments, you're not going to do it in streets, and you're not going to do it in public anywhere. And so I was persuaded, you know, I liked the idea of local constituencies being able to decide this. Um, I'm a no vote today because I think there is this real possibility of just creating a very easy way for people to get around it, and it can create um, either it's going to be bulk purchases or um, even driving it a little bit more underground than it already is. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. Assembly Member Bloom, would you like to close? Thank you. Well, it sounds like at least one of our uh, uh, opponents sitting at the table here should have been in the support line um, because I, I, I was hearing a lot of support for the notion of uh, uh, taxing these tobacco products that we're talking about here today. Um, but uh, I, I want to be clear on this. This is a very democratic measure. This allows 
democratically elected local government officials to choose by their vote to ask the voters by a two-thirds majority to enact an increase in tax. So there's a double layer of democracy here that we would be passing back to counties that we took away from them many years ago that will provide all the benefits that you heard from today. Um, I don't talk about this a lot because it's a long time ago in my past, but I used to work um, as a young person in a tobacco and candy warehouse. And I could tell you at that time when we didn't have technology to help uh, um, uh, with the system uh, uh, of uh, um, uh, paying taxes, it was really easy at that time. We used to just iron on. It was uh, a, a way of uh, applying the tax. You, you, uh, the, the company would purchase um, uh, uh, what amounted to little seals that went on each pack of cigarette. And so you wrote a check to the State Board of Equalization as a distributor. This is a very, at that time, it was not a complicated process. It was very easy. It hasn't gotten any more complicated for the industry. It has only gotten easier to provide the, uh, the service that they provide as individuals. So this is not going to have an impact on small business, as has been claimed. This is something that is simple to apply, whatever county you might be in, and uh, I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. We have a motion. We have a second. The motion is due pass. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Bonta? Aye. Bonta, aye. Mainshine? No. Mainshine, no. Baker? No. Baker, no. Bonilla? Aye. Bonilla, aye. Campos? Aye. Campos, aye. Garcia? Aye. Garcia, aye. Levine? Levine, I. Mays. Santiago. Santiago, I. Steinorth. Steinorth, no. Stone. Thurmond. Aye. Thurmond, I. Wood. Aye. Wood, I. The bill passes with a vote of 8 to 3. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. I see some member Nazarian here. Welcome, Mr. Nazarian. We are on to agenda item number six, ABX 211, Nazarian Cigarette and Tobacco Product Licensing, Fees and Funding. Mr. Nazarian, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Since